So I got myself this AMD GT with the hybrid drivetrain to move it around here all silently. But then I thought, the hell with silence. Yes, you've tuned in to a performance review of the new Mercedes AMG GT 4-door coupe S 63S E Performance V8 Biturbo 4 Matic Plus. <laughs> yeah, it's really that long that name. May we just say AMG GT Hybrid or something? Well, we directly start here in the front with the typical vertical fins. AMG styling Panamericana grille where the lower part is wider than the upper part. Sporty accentuations in the lower part. In this case also multi-beam LED with high beam performance. Interesting daytime running light here as well. Striking red color. And you see here that the AMG vehicles have this cut-in hood style which makes it even more aggressive appearance. Well, what do you get? The 4 liter V8 bi-turbo but then in this case combined with an electric drivetrain Soon all the deeds in the cutaway model, something already right now, 840 horsepower, 1,400 newton meters of torque. And the acceleration figures will be less than three seconds to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour and less than 10 seconds to 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles per hour. Four meters, zero five or 198 inches, really full size four door coupe. Look at that, that falling roof line here. This is so beautifully stretched indeed. We have in this case also carbon fiber accentuations in the lower part. This is just a pure design element, by the way. However, aerodynamic styling here for the wheels. These are the option 21 inch wheels. Standard would be 20 inch. In this case, I mean, design wise, definitely such a sporty look here. Also with the night package, black side mirror caps and also black frame around. What do you think design-wise? Tell me in the comments. Well, at the rear, most spectacular is this retractable wing. That looks fancy, doesn't it? This is the one which also has the elegant function, so to speak. There is also one with the aerodynamic spec, which has the fixed wing. You can see it later on the racetrack in the car that is driving in front of us, actually. Here, the rear, really seamless integration of everything, especially when the wing is down. Then here, the dark styling of the AMG and the Mercedes badge. Lower part, carbon fiber use here in this trim. And <whistles> auto fuel, fake exhaust police gives fake exhaust alert because the outer tip is just beauty. The real ones are then on the inside. Whoa, and you gotta check it out how this vehicle looks like from above, how the design works already from here. You might remember that Ian Callum, famous designer, has always paid a lot of attention that the cars look great from, you know, perspective from above. That was kind of like his signature move. Obviously, Mercedes head of design, Gordon Wagner, also paid attention to this, especially with this model. And as another color choice, we also have a GT silver car for you. And also very interesting, this has a brighter look overall, not these dark accentuations from the night pack. And we can especially see that here. Also just the side mirror caps in vehicle color and also chrome frames around the windows. To me, this is a less sinister look indeed. Also here the lower part with chrome. I rather prefer a bright styling always, not like this really dark look. But what about you? Which one would you actually go for? I think, not sure if I would go for the silver, but it's a very beautiful color indeed. Also the hip area shines really much in that silver color. But I would definitely go with the bright look without the night package and then yeah, maybe a Thomas Blue exterior color or something. Key fob with AMG badge front and rear. And door closing sound, frameless doors. That's why <laughs> that wasn't a door, it was like, like a door squeaking above there. <laughs> Interesting coincidence. <laughs> Once again, door closing sound. Yeah, not too good because of the frameless doors. There are some um, examples where it's still good. I mean, it's not too bad for a frameless door, definitely. And what's really cool, we have here the microfiber trim. 
nice with sporty red contrast stitches and no black pan lacquer but more carbon fiber. Yay, way to go. And also the Burmester sound system with a great sound. Then that sporty interior with recommended microfiber grip here. They are thinking also to offer it completely in microfiber. Then the AMG style with two horizontal fins, recently updated for most Mercedes, Mercedes models because hashtag capacitive BS buttons. They look cool but hard to control. Most important here is that you have the driving mode selector here and we're going to talk about these different driving modes while driving, of course. Seats, either normal sport seats or here the performance seats. They are even a sport here, even slimmer. In most cases, the normal sports is really more comfortable, but also important that we here also have the Dynamica microfiber trim. They bring more comfort and also they are more breathable in summertime. So check out on your market if you can get the microfiber seats as well, depending on maybe for normal sports seat or here for the performance seat. But considering it looks so performance <laughs> or so performant, it's actually um, you know, not too bad because it takes you know, some weight from the shoulders of the lower lumbar area and that's why it's kind of okay. One with a six or six with one and that still leaves some headroom. You can also electronically adjust that steering wheel and yeah, everything is set on race pace. In the front here, the two-door and the four-door version of the AMG GT are not too different. That's why you also have these special gauges here in that middle console. Like here, you can pick the driving modes, but it's actually better to be done on the steering wheel. Also here for um, suspension settings and so on and so on. Drive selector is a little bit, you know, could be a little bit more forward actually. So you have to reach down here then for that. This is then the AMG drive selector. On left side, you have also volume control. So these are the special gadgets you only see here in this model and also in the two-door version. The Dynamica microfiber on the seats, by the way, available both here for the performance seat and also for the normal sport seat, which is a little bit thicker as for the bolstering. However, if you want to go animal free, you have to go for 43 or the 53 model because then also the outside part is article leather red. In this case, with all the 63 models, it is from animal skin. Price and comfort wise indeed, it of course makes more sense to go for a 43 or 53 model. Special to this e-performance version is electric mode. If you want to drive pure electric, not for long though. And when you press this one, you can set the recuperation strength here to the strongest recuperation. If you are in the race mode, it will be here. Why? I'm going to explain you on the racetrack when we set this one. The interior, more carbon fiber, dual screen setup, classic MBUX unit, not like with the all new EVs and still manual climate unit. I like to have this mix of new gauges and still real buttons to control and more carbon fiber covers right here. That's pretty cool because you see hardly any black panel like this that cup holders to USB-C chargers, but the real connector is actually then further down. We've already seen the drive mode selector. And then here is this split opening where you then have the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay connection for your smartphone and also inductive charging pad. Infotainment system here, MBUX. Here you can have some gauges for energy flow, for example, or also for the drivetrain. Not sure if it's really recommended to watch that one while driving. That might distract you a little bit other than that. Um, See here the classic MBUX system, also with the GPS. We are close to Sevilla, actually, today on the Circuit do Monte Blanco. Yeah, this will be a really cool racetrack. Look forward to that. And also Apple CarPlay integration looks like this. Same goes also for the Android Auto. Digital instruments, here you can see the charging level of the battery, even in these performance gauges. And it will be charged while driving on the racetrack, for example. Really interesting. And even if it's completely depleted, there's still some buffer left that you can always, at least for 10 seconds, have the electric power boost. Six kilowatt hours net is the total capacity, by the way. And here you can also have a GPS screen in there. This is also possible. Um, can also go more full screen with that so if you're not on the racetrack actually or maybe like here at the racetrack so you can switch around that head-up display always a nice option and you can also have some performance gauges in there 
rear seating area. Take a look at that with a single seat setup that looks super fancy indeed. In the middle part, you have some cup holders then and some cubby space. Huge middle tunnel, so would wouldn't be possible anyway to have another person right there. And the thing is, it is called the AMG DT four-door coupe. Dur, dur, dur. Yes, I see the comments coming. There is no four-door coupe. That is always a big discussion, but feel free to discuss it actually. <laughs> and here, well, these slim sport seats do give you some leg room, so it is actually possible to house four tall adults in this one. Headroom-wise also works closely for me. Yeah, and then the question is, of course, the Mercedes CLS goes into a similar direction actually. Um, yeah, but then what's the difference? This one here just has to spot your focus. More to that also soon in the driving part. You open it from below and here we go. Yeah, that is not a very practical thing to have, but at least we have this fast big opening so you can at some point also easier load things in and out. And oh my God, this is where the battery is. So you have this huge step. Whew, that's a big downside for the everyday practicability definitely is hmm would it would that be worth to you then here the length is a good little bit more than a meter or 40 inches and the same accounts for the width even a little bit more so these are actually quite good measurements just here it's not too um too high just 30 centimeters or 12 inches in a very low part here so backpacks you have to move a little bit more inward then and here we can see we cannot fold the <laughs> uh, yeah, this. Yeah, there you see, by the way, also where the recharging possibility is. If it will be recharged quite frequently, that is doubtful. But we wouldn't be out of fuel if we didn't go the extra mile for you to find out more about, well, here, another vehicle where you can fold the rear seats, release it from the trunk like this and this. Um, yeah, I have to. Uh, and <laughs> push it through like this and the middle part stays. Now, where is the logic behind that? Let me give you some clarity on that. So, you would actually start, as we shown you with the red vehicle, with a fixed rear bench. The reason for that is it has a carbon fiber core and gives you even more stiffness in the chassis. So when they, from AMG, do racetrack tests, they always pick the one two-seater, fixed rear bench, cannot fold it to give more stiffness, even more sportiness to the vehicle. Then you can go for this here. This is like an executive rear seating where you also have like a middle console and so on. But then the middle part does stay like this. And then there would also be the third possibility for a five-seater version, so three seats in the rear. Then you can fold the whole thing. But that is not available for the plug-in hybrid version here because you would exceed the possible allowed weight on the rear axle. Yeah, that's really interesting, isn't it? Let's take a look in detail of that powertrain. 1,400 newton meters of torque all together with both drive units. We can see the details here in the cutaway model. In the front, the 4 liter V8 by turbo, this decombustion engine, and it generates the power right there and sends it basically first to the rear. Then we have the battery pack and below that the electric motor. It also generates the power right there and then they gather actually here and together all of that power is then together sent to the wheels. That's how it works. And you see the connection right here. This is the place where then the power is being sent to the front wheels because first of all, there's this rear wheel bias. All power is first sent to the rear wheels and then on demand also to the front wheels, the more power that is being applied. Sounds a little bit complicated, but we'll see on the racetrack how it will be in real life. So what exactly is Formula One technology here in the car? Well, it begins right here. These are the individual battery cells and they are here in these packs actually. And a couple of these packs are then inside this battery pack unit. And the Formula One thing is the cooling of the batteries because it is a fluid cooling. So you can imagine that here, there's a fluid running all around that. And usually you would have a battery cell that sits on a cooling pad actually in you know normal plug-in hybrids, for example, and also in electric vehicles. But here, fluid cooling 
for high performance. So this is not set out to be, uh, you know, operating at normal temperatures, but really at high temperatures on the racetrack like a Formula One car. This is the special thing about it. And of course, also how the whole system is laid out to be. So this is where Formula One experience actually went into the whole design and function process of the battery pack. Alright everyone, Woo. <laughs> here we go, racetrack driving, 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour, and further and further and further, 250, whoa, now hard on the brakes, and we of course also have some recuperation now, whoa, these brakes are hooking up awesomely, and in the race mode we are, where the ESC is a little bit more loose actually, and we have all that performance this drive trend can bring us. In the race mode, we have also slight recuperation. They didn't put it to the fullest recuperation because the brake blending, so the transition between recuperation and the normal brakes is supposed to be better than when it's just slight recuperation and not the full recuperation. However, I already saw the more we drive in the race track, the more battery power we gain actually capacity inside the battery because we are actually charging the battery while driving still. And I mean, this car is really heavy. It's almost two and a half tons. He had gained around 500 pounds or 240 kilograms with that uh, battery plus the electric drivetrain. But we have, whoo, <laughs> rear a little bit around. We have actually better weight distribution here in the hybrid model in comparison to the non-hybrid model. We have 50-50 distribution front and rear axle. Wow. Great performance, look at that. And we're already once again over 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour, this straight here. And it doesn't feel that fast. Good noise insulation, actually, we have to say. And because of that long wheelbase of that vehicle, yeah, here in these corners, we have the rear axle steering, which is standard for the car. That helps us definitely getting it around. But due to the long wheelbase, this car feels also really settled on the road. and. Of course, you do feel the weight in comparison to a lightweight sports car. It pushes you outside of the corners, no doubt. But for a car of that size, of that length, I can't believe how agile we can drive it. It's amazing. Once again, rear axis steering, then that really good weight distribution. Of course, also the suspension, stiffer now here in the dynamic mode, air suspension as standard. And wow. I mean, the balance of the car, steering are also really crisp and direct. Yeah, I can just stress that, of course, a lightweight, pure sports car is more fun at the racetrack. But considering the dimensions of the vehicle, I can't believe how agile we can move it around here. Depending on the racetrack, the performance version, the e-performance version, will be better if there are more straights like this then it would also be giving you faster lap times than with the normal combustion engine version of the 63S. When the race track is a little bit more agile, having more fast and tight corners, then the combustion engine version will have an advantage because it has just less weight. So it depends on the race track. But what I feel here from the acceleration is, mm, especially when you are immediately on the throttle out of tight corners here i mean this this very first split second you have there that is a difference to having just a combustion engine that split second you are on the throttle the throttle input is even more direct and what i found actually the greatest achievement here from the engineers is that the transition there of the electric drivetrain and the combustion engine from that first moment is actually quite nice. So this is the thing, and it is actually fun. It's hard to describe, really. It doesn't feel like a pure electric performance car. It doesn't feel like pure combustion engine. Indeed, you feel that hybrid, uh, you know, that there's this hybrid characteristic. I mean, sometimes you have these situations where the combustion engine, you know, where the RPMs a little bit more suddenly kick in. So. 
indeed, if you compare it to, uh, let's say, yeah, like a natural aspirator engine or something, you don't have the most natural racy feeling. It is to a point a little bit more artificial, but this effect, of course, we do rather feel when we really push the limits here on the racetrack. It's nothing that you would, you know, immediately feel when driving it on the road. Uh, definitely super interesting how they brought this Formula One tech, how we can drive with some, something that Lewis Hamilton is actually uh, using. You can also use that yourself in a street legal car. So really having a lot of fun, but you can't deny the weight, can't deny that fact. It also stresses your body a little bit, although these sports seats are holding us tight very well. Can't deny the fact that the weight is there and if you want to have most fun, you would still go for a lighter sports car, however impressive of what this car is nevertheless capable of. Okay, who will ever take this car on the racetrack for real? <laughs> most of the time people want to drive this just as a daily driver and maybe have some performance moments. So we are also going to test it here on normal roads. This suspension here, by the way, I mean, it does, you know, even out some waves and so on. Smaller bumps could be worse. It's not that you would get like pushes in your lower back or something. That is prevented actually. However, it does remind you all the time or let me take it that way, it always punishes you for not buying the CLS. <laughs> At least when you want some comfort, it's like, bam, you should have taken the CLS, bam, you should have taken the CLS. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you take this one in all seriousness now, you take this one here, if you want to be reminded all the time that it's a sporty vehicle, you know? So a CLS or a Porsche Panamera or the Audi A7 would definitely give you more comfort. This one here is set on such a sporty note that you can somewhat still use it as a daily driver, yes. But you have, you know, especially when you pick these bucket seats, steering wheel, that sporty seating position and the stiff setup from the suspension, especially when you go with the 21-inch wheels, it is always like kind of like taking you like, come on, like, do you maybe still want to go on the racetrack? <laughs> so that's, that's the thing. It will cost you comfort. You have to be sure about this pick, actually. But if you're really that sports fan, even though you need four doors, then it is actually something for you. And, you know, from these features like the direct steering and so on, you also profit in normal cruising. That's actually pretty cool. And when you are in the normal comfort mode, sound-wise, there's not much happening, actually. And, of course, when it's driving really slowly, then you're also in that pure electric mode, like it is at the moment. I also see it here, zero RPM. So we are driving all electric at the moment. I can also induce that with going to the electric mode, EL. But even if, I, if I'm in the comfort mode, then it does stay actually in the electric one. Only when I go to the sports mode here, then you can see the RPMs jump up, but then also rather silent from that engine, sports plus mode and we have more sound feedback in the race mode we tested earlier. Uh, interesting thing here you can do also with this driving selector in the lower part. When you press it, then you have recuperation stages and you can do it kind of like zero. Lift your foot off the throttle, that's just rolling. One, two, three steps and then, whew, then you have also significant deceleration by the regenerative braking. Yeah, I mean, the question is, when do you want that? Maybe if you're rolling down a hill for a longer time, then it's a more, more comfortable feature, definitely, that you don't have to use the brakes that much. Other than that, if you use the brake yourself, you will also first use recuperation, and then, actually, the real brakes are being applied. So it's just a different way to actually reach the same goal. Wow, and like every single roundabout, <laughs> is, is really a lot of fun with that vehicle. So yes, losing comfort, defo, but you also gain a lot of fun. That's the thing. To me, it is actually, especially considering the everyday driving features of this vehicle, 
Mm, I'm not a fan of more sportiness on the cost of comfort. There are vehicles which deliver both. That would be more my thing. This one is here when you don't want to compromise that much. Actually, have to just know that. As for the real electric range, we don't even have to talk about this because the battery is so small that you cannot say like, oh, you know, I'm commuting to work with this all electric or something. This, in most cases, will not work. They really put this in for the performance only. You always still remain with that buffer, so it never completely depletes. It's really a thing that you just get more performance and especially when you're also here in, you know, in normal city traffic, it can be quite interesting to have a more spontaneous throttle input indeed. And we have experienced that with also normal pure electric vehicles, which are kind of like small, that they have a more spontaneous acceleration from the from standstill than some of the huge performance cars. You just get more spontaneous reaction. That's also what this hybridization is for. And even in city traffic, this can be quite interesting. You have to be very gently with the throttle. On the racetrack, we let it all <laughs> open. But here, you're really very, very much fine-tuning your throttle, always watching the speed limits, because as soon as you just press a little bit more, it actually goes nuts. So, yeah, it's, it's really like putting this car here on the everyday driving test is really something like, you know, your your. You have some wide anim wild animals on a leash and you're always holding them tight and they're always waiting to be released, you know, that's the thing, what you experience here. Here then also the assistance systems, setting them on the hashtag capacitive BS buttons on the left side. Cruise control, also normal Caution function. Traffic event ahead. Thank you so much. Oh, wow, that's a nice one. Because there's a, there's a tire in the middle of the road. That was a great warning. Heads off. I mean, we couldn't stage that. Nice. I'm just waiting for, for some reaction from Jonas, but he's always like Mr. Cool. He's always like, <laughs> but, I don't know. I've seen worse. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So the cruise control is also doing a good job. You can also get the blind spot monitors. We, can all, we also have that here. So uh, then the cars when they appear in the blind spot, you get this, um, this you know, flashing. Let me go see here now. On the right. Yeah, they heard that. That was on the right side. And when you're also setting the turning indicators, then you also get an acoustic warning additionally. That's definitely a very helpful feature. So basically, it delivers everything you also need in every, everyday driving life. You can put this as a everyday driver. It is possible, however, then, uh, let me give you some advice on that. If you still want to keep the comfort up in some ways, maybe rather stick with the normal sport seats and also stick with 20 inch wheels and don't go for 21. Yeah, then at least you can do something. If you want more comfort but still want a great looking car and it is also sporty, well, and you don't plan to use this one on the racetrack, then you might indeed consider the Mercedes CLS, maybe S53 AMG or the Audi A7, maybe then as the RS7.